this. And now it's time for the windshield bar. And you know what, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this, uh, pretty common. Uh, you pretty much kind of think about your driver's field of view. So in some instances, you need to kind of sit high or tucked away, or even other instances, you need to kind of push forward, like just under the windshield itself. So to increase the structural uh, rigidity of this cage and of course the safety of it, I'm gonna put it right underneath this roof rib right here because you know when this impacts uh, all of this coming in, if it ever, you know, flip it over on its noggin, this will also help in conjunction with the bar itself to keep the driver safe. So uh, at the point where it's going to sit, it's not gonna be in the driver's field of view. So we can, you know, run with a very simple design and just run straight across. So I think that's the one I'm gonna do here. Every now and again, um, if the forward hoops sit a little bit low, uh, then we'll put a little bend on each end of it to try and mate up with it to keep it out of the driver's field of view. But again, he's sitting pretty low in this one, so I'm just gonna run straight across. I'm gonna take a measurement here, and the tube looks like I've got a 38 inch tube notched on both sides, and then we'll have a windshield bar. It's really that easy, so, so again, sometimes the simplest designs are the ones that you gotta use. Let's see how we go. Well, I got the notches fit nicely, but you know what? Now that I look at this, I'm noticing something I don't like. And while right here, it would be theoretically out of the driver's field of view, I really don't like how low this goes. Um, you know, I just can't let that slide. So, I think what I'm gonna do is put a bend, an upward bend in this. Maybe we can try to revive this tube. Uh, it's pretty tightly fit, but you know, a small bend, it won't it won't move it too much. So I'm going to attempt to revive this tube before cutting another one. So this is one of those classic examples where it starts out looking great, but sometimes in the end, you know, it just happens. So I'm going to take half of this tube, and I know the offset of, uh, let's say, a 15 degree bend is going to be about an inch and three eighths from my center line. So I'm going to mark out an inch and three eighths off of that. Put a 15 degree bend in here and see how well that fits. And if we can revive this tube, cool. If not, I've just got to toss it and we'll start over with a fresh piece and a new bend. So let's try that out real quick though. Okay, so we're all set up in the bender. Take a spare piece of tube, we'll place it in the notch. Kind of see where you're at here, okay? Now the reason why I do this is I can figure out which direction I want my bend to go. The way I have it set up in the bender here, the tube runs through this plane or this uh, area, the, 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 the bend is actually going to go forward. And I don't want the bend to point forward, I want it to go upward. I want it to you know, bend around the mirror and go point it up toward the roof line a little bit. So I'm just going to clock this right about where I think it's going to end up. And we'll crank that down. Now this isn't much of a bend, actually I'm going to I think I'm going to start out, I'm going to start out 10, maybe 15 degrees. Just a couple of little cranks here. There's 10. One for good measure there. Let's see how well that fits. So let's see. You know what, 10 fits surprisingly well, but you know what, I think I'm going to I think I'm gonna go one more. I'm gonna go to 15 degrees just to kind of really sneak it up there. Uh, I'd rather be more out of the way than in the way. So just, uh, yeah, I'm gonna stick it back in the bender. I'm gonna give it 15 degrees. Right, let's see how well 15 fits. Well, that's a lot better. That's definitely a lot better. So the notches don't quite fit right now. Um, I just got to do a little more trimming and we'll open them up just a little bit more so I get that nice tight fit. So I'm going to do that real quick and then we're going to weld this one in. Well, we're progressing quite nicely here actually. Um, obviously the main hoop is in, front hoops are in, the windshield bar, we got lucky and didn't have to waste any material on that. And if you'll notice, as we progress, everything's getting just a little bit easier each time. Now I haven't dropped the cage again to get the windshield bar completely welded up top because we have one more piece that we have to do which is by request. Now it's not in the rule book that it's mandatory for this class but it is allowed to be added. Any additional reinforcement is allowed to be added and that's what we're going to do and that's how it's classified. 
This piece is called a roof bar, and the purpose of the roof bar is to extend above the driver's head to the opposite corner of the vehicle, or above right where the windshield bar meets, and it's to protect the driver's head in the event that you flip the car over on its noggin. And uh, I usually just jokingly refer to it as a noggin bar, or when I'm talking about it. So if you ever hear me say that, hey, well, there you go, you know it's the, it's the roof bar. So I'm gonna try and repurpose another tube that I goofed on earlier. It, uh, it has a 20 degree bend in it, and that stretches over quite nicely. I'm just gonna hold it up there and kind of look at it and see, okay, maybe we have enough space without contacting the roof. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark it, notch it, and see if I can get it in there. So if we can't, then, you know, hey, bummer. Uh, I'll just have to uh, go cut a new piece and give it just a little bit less of a bend because it does look pretty close where it's at. So to start this off, I'm going to place it up where it needs to be. A rough, rough idea where it's at. And it's kind of difficult here, but I'm get my face line on it. Drop a couple throat lines. Now, the angle that this sits at is actually kind of tricky, so I'm going to go extremely easy on the notching to begin with, because most of it's going to have to get cut out with a grinder. So this notch is going to be pretty straightforward, but this one is right in the middle of that bend radius. So that is going to have to be cut entirely out by hand with the use of a grinder. So I'm going to get this one started out here, see how close we get, and then we'll toss the other one in. Okay, so what I didn't mention earlier, in fact, I completely spaced me, but... We're also adding corner gussets to the inside structure of the cage in four different places. And then up inside this corner here is one of those places. So uh, I do have the noggin bar all set up. It's notched out, fits beautifully right in the corner, which it took some time to get because it's a, it's, a, it's a very difficult notch to do. We have it meeting at two different places on two different heights and also with the radius in the middle of it. So it did take a lot of carving with the grinder and a lot of repeated fit checks in here. So in addition to that, I have the corner gusset already placed in and the noggin bar is going to go straight to the corner gusset. I also have to put the corner gusset on the other side, which I'm about ready to go cut that in a minute here. And then make sure that all of these two made up correctly and meet where they're supposed to and whatnot. So, but it fits. We have clearance on the roof with no problems, no points of contact though. So we're pretty much good to go. I'm going to set this in here and Give it a good thunk real quick to make sure that it stays in place while I'm doing the fab work and mock up on the other side. So, but as soon as I get the other gusset in, I'm going to drop the cage down again, get all of this welded up, and the front section is pretty much done aside from the door bars. But We have one more item that needs to go in here before we drop the cage for the final time and get the rocker boxes built, and that is the corner gussets. So we already put the other two up top, and these ones are going to go on this side. So we did drop it down to inch and a quarter tubing instead of using the inch and a half, uh, which is no big deal. Uh, but one thing you need to remember when you do weld these in here uh, is accessibility. So. Uh, the cage does have to drop one more time, and uh, where it's going to drop up top here is going to be right in this opening right here. So we'll be able to actually access those to weld them completely all the way around. And of course this one will be accessible through the back door. So as long as uh, when you're fabricating that you need to know and remember that you have to be able to access it with the welder and whatnot. Otherwise, you know, you could put it up there and find out you can't weld it. So Right now I have it mocked up. I've measured from the main hoop to the end of this tube to make sure that it's gonna be the exact same on both sides. Both corner gussets are cut identical. And of course, slapping them in should be no big deal. So I measured from the main hoop to the end of this and I got seven inches. So on the opposite side, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So for right now, let's just toss the tacks in. Okay, I'm going to tack up the other side, make sure everything looks good, and then we'll do a full weld, drop the cage for the last time. 